I'd say like 26, maybe 24, 24 maybe. Okay. So I think this will go over really good for that reason, because I only have six of you here, so you guys are actually the healthy ones, so you can tell the ones that aren't here. Now remind me what grade we are. I was worried about the first. I would say freshman, okay. health, class, and high okay. school. Okay. We'll okay. say Henry Clay today. So um, my topic that I'm going over with you today, it's a simple topic. It's something that you talk about every day uh, as a coach. I hear my kids talk about it every day. Um, it's related to personal health and wellness. And it is a minor subtopic, but a huge problem in America amongst kids our age or your age. I know your age is a little younger than your age, but actually your age too. So uh, we'll just dive right in. Uh, it is sleep deprivation amongst adolescents. So uh, the big question to me, hopefully that we answer after this is over, is how can we become healthier sleepers? Hopefully I can give you a couple ways. I'm going to show you an app later of maybe that might be able to help you organize everything. Um, so just dive right in. Uh, are we getting enough sleep? Are you getting enough sleep? I see you already one person shaking. No, no. Nobody here is getting enough sleep. And obviously the 24 people here aren't getting enough sleep because they're not here. So uh, do you think you all go to bed early enough every night? No. Uh, what time do you want to go to bed? Like, what, what do you tell yourself every day? I'm going to bed this time, and then you end up going to sleep two hours later. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. 10.30. 10.30, around 10.30? 10.30. That's, that's about average. I would say probably 10.30, 11. That's usually about average. Uh, when you don't get enough sleep, how do you feel the next day? Uh, right? Okay. <laughs> I was just telling Dr. Nolan, um, when I stay up and work on projects or PowerPoints for class, and I stay over, if I'm up past midnight, I wake up the next morning, and I'm a little bit older than everyone, but I feel like that. Like, I'm, I'm telling you, when I was 25, I could stay up till 3 a.m. and wake up the next day and be like, let's go, let's do it again. I do that today, you probably won't see me the next day because I'll still be in bed. Um, so, yeah, I get it. When, if you don't get enough sleep, it's easy to tell. And if you get enough sleep, it's also easy to tell because you're probably the cheeriest person in your morning class. You know, everybody else is back to sleep. Um, so how much sleep do you think is recommended per day for people our age? About eight. Eight? eight about eight nine, sound right? Yeah. Eight to ten is about it. And it can vary, too. So it can be eight to ten, but it can drop down to seven. So if you've got seven hours of sleep, that would be good. That would be okay. That would be considered healthy. Or you could get 11 hours of sleep, which, man, that's awesome. I can think of the last time I did that. I was probably like 15 or something like that. But So it varies. The recommended is 8 to 10. You don't want to go lower than 7. That's considered unhealthy. Uh, do kids your age get the recommended amount of sleep they need? Do you think as a whole we get the yeah. Good? Good? No? No. All right. And what, what makes you think that? Do you, are you like me when you have, like I have a lot of players, golf and baseball, and every single day they come in and they tell me after school that they're tired. And it's the same people every time. And I would say it's probably about 80% of my team is tired. So that's not a very productive team when they're always tired of practicing. Um, so uh, any ideas why you think adolescents struggle to get the healthy amount of sleep? Just a couple things. Years, basketball practice, school. Yeah, I was just like in high school, like I used to just like go to sleep late because I was on my phone. Like, yeah. Now I'm at the point where like it's like I really have no choice but to go to sleep late between just my schedule, like the class, the yeah. practice. Um, so it's almost your sleep schedule is late now. So yeah, yeah you're just kind of getting used to feeling like that. And that's that's a bad thing. And that's that's why some people, if you if you do your own research, say that it's kind of an epidemic. Because it's something that's not going fixed. We're just being used to it. Everything, we're just used to it. We're just going along with it. So, um, we're just going to go over a couple of things uh, just to kind of answer a couple of questions that we've already answered. Uh, but before that, and I forgot this, if you can get a piece of paper, or I'll give you a piece of paper real quick. Um, make sure. Here you go. Here you go. So I just want you to think back in the past five days. So this is going to be not very specific. It's going to be kind of a ballpark. So do the past five days, the times you woke up, 
and then the times that she went to bed, okay? So each day, when did I wake up, when did I go to bed? And then kind of get the difference. How much sleep did you get that day? And kind of set that out to the side. And we're gonna total all five of those up. And then we're gonna divide them and get our average amount of sleep in the past five days. Anybody have any questions or need any help with that? Really simple, I kind of give you an example of how to do it. And then when you're done, just kind of shoot out an average that you have. And I wouldn't usually do that in a normal class, but there's only six of us, so it's a little bit quieter today. <coughs> It's okay to use your phones. I had to. <laughs> and, my, and my fingers and my toes. And the reason we're doing this is just so you can kind of get, uh, like I said, a ballpark idea of your average sleep. Um, I'm hoping at the end of this little PowerPoint that you kind of are awoke by the amount of sleep that you're getting and maybe you want to try to fix it. I know some of us, we can't, we're just set in our schedule, but there's still ways to sleep in that schedule and still wake up healthy or feel at least refreshed. So, um, anybody done yet? No? You can actually see the colors. I was afraid you were gonna see it. Mm -hmm. I did all that hard work. I think you're making them sleepy. <laughs> yeah, I guess this wasn't the best. I was just kind of wanting to get you, because I, I know a lot of people don't really think about it. You don't, you just, you sleep, you wake up, you don't think about how much you're getting sleep. So you don't really have an average, you don't have anything to go off of, whether you're under or over or getting enough. Because if you're getting enough sleep and you're still tired, then it's something else we need to look at. Maybe it's something else, personal health or wellness or another topic. I'm when I get up and I don't have enough. All right, so we'll just go ahead. Somebody just shoot out an average that you got. I average eight hours in the past five days. In the past five days, that's good. How many? 7.8. 7.8, just about eight, good. Around eight. Good, well this is kind of making sense why you guys are here right now. Everybody's rested. What about you? Five. Five, oh, hard work. <laughs> yeah, it's making sense. See, you can see this right now. She looks tired. <laughs> You guys are a little more upbeat. I mean, I'm not trying to single anybody out, but I mean, if I were tired, you'd call me out. Um, but yeah, you can get it. You're getting eight hours of sleep. You feel better than somebody that's getting five hours of sleep. Megan, how many did you get? Around eight. Eight, so you're good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Good. All right, well, I just, I want you to keep that in mind. You can hold on to that. We're going to use that later. Um, and just a couple of facts to run down just before we move on. Um, biological sleep patterns shift towards later times for both sleeping and walking during adolescence, meaning that the average time that you guys go to sleep, which we talked about, you said 10.30, 10, is 11. So if you're going before 11, you're doing good. You're doing better than most. So um, te teens need about 8 to 10 hours. We mentioned that. Uh, most teens do not get enough sleep. One study found that 15% only reported getting enough sleep, which that's pretty crazy. Um, Teenagers, 14 to 17 range widens, so they're eight to 10, it was previously eight and a half to nine, and then younger adults, as you see, is seven to nine. Um, moving on from that. So this is something, I, as I was doing research, I found I thought it was very important to read to you guys. Um, and something that'll stick out is it's from 2006, but that is actually the most recent survey of something this big. So we'll just have to go with that, and if you guys feel free, you can do some research if you wanna bring something back to me that's even uh, sooner towards uh, 2019, that would work. But let's just go, uh, it says more than 87% of high school students in the United States uh, get the recommended, or do not get the recommended <coughs> eight, to hours, eight to 10 hours of sleep. Um, that's a serious threat to their health and safety, academic success. Uh, the negative con consequences from that include the inability to concentrate, you get poor grades, uh, drowsy driving, and you cause accidents, which that's something you never want to do. I had one of those happen in high school, not me, but somebody I knew. Did not end well, and it was just because he hadn't slept all night. Um, you get anxiety, depression, suicide, and even attempt suicide. 
So these are all very serious things that come from something so small and you don't think about it, you just go about it, you're tired, you just move through it. Um, but if we can really fix it and get through it, you can take a lot of these negative con consequences out of the way and help your personal health and wellness. Um, more of the consequences, just because I really want to hold in on these. Um, a lot of us look like this person right here at the top, and that's probably like the, the 1 a.m. look, you know. That's what I look at at 1 a.m., and then I, the, the picture after that would be like a tombstone the next day. Um, uh, lack of sleep can limit your ability to learn, listen, and concentrate. So, unfortunately, you won't be able to pay attention to me, listen to me, concentrate on what we're dealing with, which I hope you can today. You can fight through it. Um, it, it can cause acne and other skin problems, which is huge amongst people your age. You don't want the acne, which is hard to fight, um, but sleep also increases that chance. Um, it can cause aggressive and appropriate behavior. Who hasn't gotten a fight with somebody in the morning because they were grumpy? Uh, you know, my wife calls me a grouch every now and then. Um, it can also cause you to eat too much food, which is usually unhealthy food, which then means you gain weight. So you're gaining weight and you have acne which is like the two most important things that kids don't want in high school. Um, and then this one at the bottom is really important to me as a health teacher. Uh, five health behaviors that have been identified as being a key preventing chronic disease. Not smoking, obviously. Physical activity as a PE teacher, that's very important. Uh, moderate to no alcohol consumption. And then maintaining healthy weight. But the one at the very bottom, which we're focusing on today, which you probably wouldn't have guessed is one of the five, main health behaviors, getting enough sufficient sleep, which is seven hours or more. So if you're under seven hours, we got to try to get that up. And we've already talked about what has lack of sleep done to you, but does anybody have like a personal story they would like to say that happened from sleep? You maybe missed a test, hopefully not an accident, anything like that? No? Yes? No? Don't want to talk about it? All good. Um, so this is a really, I know we've all seen TED Talks. Um, this is one that I actually did research. I saw a lot of different videos and I thought this hit home best. So we're just gonna try to watch this, hopefully it pulls up. And this will kind of give you the consequences and why it is so important for us to get enough sleep as young adults and adolescents. is in eight hours, followed by a piano recital. You've been studying and playing for days, but you still don't feel ready for either. So what can you do? Well, you can drink another cup of coffee and spend the next few hours cramming and practicing, but believe it or not, you might be better off closing the books, putting away the music, and going to sleep. Sleep occupies nearly a third of our lives, but many of us give surprisingly little attention and care to it. This neglect is often the result of a major misunderstanding. Sleep isn't lost time, or just a way to rest when all our important work is done. Instead, it's a critical function during which your body balances and regulates its vital systems, affecting respiration and regulating everything from circulation to growth and immune response. That's great, but you can worry about all those things after this test, right? Well, not so fast. It turns out that sleep is also crucial for your brain, with a fifth of your body's circulatory blood being channeled to it as you drift off. And what goes on in your brain while you sleep is an intensely active period of restructuring that's crucial for how our memory works. At first glance, our ability to remember things doesn't seem very impressive at all. 19th century psychologist Herman Ebbinghaus demonstrated that we normally forget 40% of new material within the first 20 minutes, a phenomenon known as the forgetting curve. But this loss can be prevented through memory consolidation, the process by which information is moved from our fleeting short-term memory to our more durable long-term memory. This consolidation occurs with the help of a major part of the brain known as the hippocampus. Its role in long-term memory formation was demonstrated in the 1950s by Brenda Milner in her research with a patient known as HM. After having his hippocampus removed, 
HM's ability to form new short-term memories was damaged, but he was able to learn physical tasks through repetition. Due to the removal of his hippocampus, HM's ability to form long-term memories was also damaged. What this case revealed, among other things, was that the hippocampus was specifically involved in the consolidation of long-term declarative memory, such as the facts and concepts you need to remember for that test, rather than procedural memory, such as the finger movements you need to master for that recital. Milner's findings, along with work by Eric Kandel in the 90s, have given us our current model of how this consolidation process works. Sensory data is initially transcribed and temporarily recorded in the neurons as short-term memory. From there, it travels to the hippocampus, which strengthens and enhances the neurons in that cortical area. Thanks to the phenomenon of neuroplasticity, new synaptic buds are formed, allowing new connections between neurons and strengthening the neural network, where the information will be returned as long-term memory. So why do we remember some things and not others? Well, there are a few ways to influence the extent and effectiveness of memory retention. For example, memories that are formed in times of heightened feeling or even stress will be better recorded due to the hippocampus's link with emotion. But one of the major factors contributing to memory consolidation is, you guessed it, a good night's sleep. Sleep is composed of four stages, the deepest of which are known as slow wave sleep and rapid eye movement. EEG machines monitoring people during these stages have shown electrical impulses moving between the brainstem, hippocampus, thalamus, and cortex, which serve as relay stations of memory formation. And the different stages of sleep have been shown to help consolidate different types of memories. During the non-REM, slow wave sleep, declarative memory is encoded into a temporary store in the anterior part of the hippocampus. Through a continuing dialogue between the cortex and hippocampus, it is then repeatedly reactivated, driving its gradual redistribution to long-term storage in the cortex. REM sleep, on the other hand, with its similarity to waking brain activity, is associated with the consolidation of procedural so based on the studies, going to sleep three hours after memorizing your formulas and one hour after practicing your scales would be the most ideal. So hopefully you can see now that skipping on sleep not only harms your long-term health, but actually makes it less likely that you'll retain all that knowledge and practice from the previous night. All of which just goes to affirm the wisdom of the phrase sleep on it. When you think about all the internal restructuring and forming of new connections, that occurs while you slumber. You could even say that proper sleep will have you waking up every morning with a new and improved brain, ready to face the challenges ahead. Alright. So, uh, I would have liked to stop in between some of those and point out some key points, but with time constraints, I was not able to. Um, I will get back to that so you can tell me anything that you've learned from that video. Hopefully you got something from it. Um, it was probably one of the shorter and more interesting videos I could find. Everybody else was kind of boring, so hopefully, since you guys had enough sleep, that was okay. Um, so we're just going to go over some quick solutions real quick, and then I'm going to go over an app that could help us with our sleep. Um, solutions, and these are very basic, and there's so many more out there that can help. But uh, make sleep a priority in your life. Uh, try to have a sleep diary if it's something that's really hurting you or something that's really bothering you. Just writing down how much sleep you're getting and what you're eating or what's causing you not to sleep can really help. Uh, nap sparingly. Naps are good if they're at the right time, midday. If they're later in the day, they can hinder you actually sleeping uh, your healthy duration at night. Uh, sleep in a desired climate. I'm like a polar bear, so it's really cold in my house at night. Um, some people like it really hot, like my sister. She lives in Atlanta. She's used to that, so I don't know. Um, no caffeine. That is a must right before you go to sleep, or nicotine or alcohol, they all act the same, they all keep us up. Um, create a scheduled bedtime, so like we all talk about when we want to go to bed, if we can actually get to where we're consistent enough, we can change our body's internal clock, so you could be like some of my uncles who can wake up the same time every day without an alarm clock, which is pretty impressive. Um, Stick to quiet and calm activities, not looking at your phone, your computer, or your telephone. LED screens keep you up. 
Um, at the bottom it says reading a book can help at night help you go to sleep. Now you could argue that you could read a book on your phone, but that's an LED screen, and LED screens keep you up. That's why the the tin or the Kindles or whatever those things are called, the screens are actually like dull looking. They look really old. That's because they also actually help you. It doesn't keep you awake, type thing. Um, and then we're just going to go ahead and move into the app. If you guys can go ahead and pull the app out if you happen to download it, it is Sleep Cycle. Um, let's see if I can pull off something here a second. Uh, so what you see here at the bottom is kind of an interfaces that you'll see. This is the basic one that you'll see. This is your alarm. <coughs> this is kind of how they recommend where you sit it. And some of you are going to go ahead and say, uh, you're not supposed to sit your phone on your bed like that. Um, that is true, but there is an option to sit it on a table next to your bed. Um, it just depends on the phone. So some phones run hotter than others. If your phone runs hot, I would not put it on the bed. Um, but that is one of the recommended places because your phone, when you move out the bed, the little thing that flips in your phone, that switches the screen, is what monitors you. And then the microphone, actually, it can like monitor your sleep sounds and snoring. That's an option on here. Um, so let's just see if I can go ahead and move into it. Um, those are just some more interfaces real quick to go over. Um, when I'll show you, this is what you guys will see. Um, you can actually buy an upgraded version that breaks it down into this. This is like over a three year span. So you can see this guy started this program and he has <coughs> six hours of sleep. And in two years he's up to almost eight hours of sleep now. So it really does help if you actually monitor your sleep and make a sleep schedule and use the different things that are out there to help you. So let's see if I can remember what Andrew said. Just really slow. So there we go. All right. So oh, that's not good. That's it. Okay. So. When you download this app, this should have been something that popped up immediately. Is this the first thing that popped up when you got it and you got into it? This is your alarm clock. Uh, there's three different versions. So this is called the, the wake up phase. So this is a, it, you can say, change it from 10 minutes all the way up to 45 minutes. So if you want to wake up at 6 o'clock, you can say a wake up phase of 20 minutes. So between 540 and 6 o'clock is your alarm. And it's monitoring your sleep. So you're in REM sleep. Once you come out of REM sleep, if you're in that 20 minute segment, it just goes ahead and sets your alarm so you wake up. So instead of like your alarm abruptly wakes you up or you wake up, you fall back to sleep and then your alarm goes off, one of those type things, that won't happen with this. You'll wake up when you need to. Um, you can switch it to just an alarm. You can switch it to no alarm and it just monitors your sleep. And then the big thing right here is the... Well, Yeah. Is the journal. Um, it just marks, so this is from last night. I went ahead and did it. Um, you can see when I went to sleep, this is showing that I went deep into deep sleep immediately. Around 1 o'clock, I woke up, used the restroom, and then from that point on, I go up and down, which is kind of normal for my sleep. I wake up a lot. Um, and then down at the bottom, it just breaks it down when you went to bed, when you woke up. Is the down um, good sleep? Oh, Back to the graph. Which sorry. Is a good yes. The, so, since you can't see it right here on your phone, you'll see this is deep sleep. That says sleep, and that says awake. Okay. So this is your REM sleep right here. Okay. So the, this is really good sleep, and then with the. How many hours at the beginning were you in deep sleep? Uh, it says I was in deep sleep for from 10 to midnight, and then slowly started coming up, and I guess that's when I finally woke up, and then. Um, it, like I said, it even shows when you snore, so and that's important because I can wake you up too. So it just breaks down everything, and you can see down here, well, you might not be able to see it with the little light that it has on it, but it says add notes. And when you click on that, you can add that you drank coffee, um, that you drank tea, you ate late, stressful stuff like that, and add notes. So if you didn't sleep good, then you can go back and you can figure out why you didn't sleep good. And then the one that I, I did, so you, I don't think you can do this on yours. But it just breaks everything down. And that's pretty much for the time that I've got. It's a very simple app. You pretty much put your information in, you set your alarm, and it monitors yourself. You just set it next to you. And then it breaks down all the information. It can go over a year's period of time if you really want it. 
um, really helpful and it's a good way to get back on your sleep schedule and to see maybe why you're not sleeping as well. Um, so the last thing I'll have to ask you guys to do today, I'm sorry I ran over a little bit, um, what have we learned today? So you got, well, you don't have that because I didn't put it up there. Maybe me. Yeah, me. Let me back this. Um, you have five questions over stuff that we went over today. Pick one. Write a sentence or two about it on that card that I gave you. If you have a question that you don't, any of these that you don't want to answer or you just don't like, um, give me something that you learned from the video. I just want to see what you guys learned today. I want to see if this was helpful at all, if maybe we need to dive into it more later on in the semester. Um, so yeah, I'll just give you a couple minutes and then I'll let you guys go. You don't have to answer them all. I don't know if I was specific about that. But. Okay. Thank you guys for paying attention and not falling asleep on me. Make sure you let your classmates know that the more rest they get, the better chances they got to be in class today. Show them the app, maybe that'll help. Okay, thank you. He wants to play.